The American Broadcasting Company presents Charlie Lung, the man of a hundred voices in his new Western series, El Lobo Rides Again. Underlay! Underlay! Asta, my black beauty! Asta! Asta Lorena, Asta! Run like the wind! <laughs> Charlie Lung, the man of a hundred voices, brings you another thrilling Western story of El Lobo, foe of evil, defender of right. The story of lightning draw Lobo and his mighty black mare, Lorena, fastest horse in all Mexico. In just a moment, the action-packed story of the ambush, but first... Last year... Charlie Lung's one-man show had a coast and mountain release on another major network, Saturday morning from 8 to 8.30. It started with a point four, zero point four. Five months later, a special Hooper survey gave The Adventures of Charlie Lung a 2 as a first rating. The show started with seven stations and finished with over 30. Before one year, its rating reached a 3.2 at 8 o'clock in the morning. Today's story of the Old West opens in the little cow town of Lone Pine, Arizona, near the Mexican border. Its one claim to notoriety is the Silver Dollar Gambling Casino, rendezvous of gunmen, gamblers, and riffraff from both sides of the border. Our scene opens in the lavish office of its gambler owner, Ace Kimball, who looks up from his desk to greet his evil henchman, Steve Cody, who stands at the door. Well, there you are, Steve Cody. Come in, come in. <laughs> Close the door, Cody. Here, yeah. sure, Ace, anything you say. Yeah. Well, what's on your mind, Ace? The Lazy Y Ranch. Shucks, so you're still hankering to get your hands on the Lazy Y, huh? I want to possess that ranch more than anything else in Arizona. <laughs> and you know, when Ace Kimball decides he wants anything, he always gets it, no matter the cost. Why, well, sure, but you... If in that old coot gold pan Jeffers who owns it don't want to sell, <laughs> then your money ain't going to do you much good, is it? I don't remember mentioning money, Cody. This deal calls for a six-gun. Well, now you're talking my lingo. <laughs> who do you want fitted for a wooden overcoat this time? An Indian. Huh? An Indian? Why does an Indian fit in? Very simple, Cody. You know of Chief Big Horse and his son running deer. Well, sure. Big Horse is chief of them OG war tribe. Then listen. Those redskins will be riding through Rattlesnake Canyon to Lazy Y in one hour. Yeah? So? You'll be waiting on the canyon rim above them. Yeah? And a well-placed bullet will knock young running deer off his horse. <laughs> Consonities. I get it. <laughs> Them Indians are going to think they was ambushed by a lazy white rider. Right, Cody. Then them redskins will hit the warpath and kill every man on the lazy white. Steve Cody, gunslinger and bad man, hurries out to the hitch rack that fronts the Silver Dollar Casino. Quickly, he leaps into the saddle and swings his powerful buckskin toward the south. His flushed face twists into a cruel grin as he rides madly for Rattlesnake Canyon to keep his rendezvous with death. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Lazy Y Ranch, completely unaware of the sinister shadow drawing closer, its kindly owner, Goldpan Jeffers, supervises the final arrangements to receive his Indian guests. His little Chinese cook, Charlie Sam, assisted by his huge colored friend, the Lazy Y handyman, Cyclone Jackson, heaps good eats upon the long ranch table. Now, oh, just a minute, you two. Look what you're doing, being busted. Our Indian friends are going to be here any minute. You know you ain't using your heads. Cyclone! Yes, sir, Mr. Jeffers? Don't be putting all the apple pie on this end of the table. Put some of that blueberry down there, too. Now get you moving. Yes, sir, Mr. Jaffer. Get out of my way, Charlie. Lord, the Chinaman you is always under my feet. Too crazy, Mr. Cyclone. You too much talking. Talk it, talk it, talk it. One go, the other time go. You only time me like a big man. Uh oh, I is as I use satchel mouth. Someday, brother Charlie, I want to bust you wide open. By jings, you two, stop your gabbling, will you? 
I don't know which one of you it was. I know who he was. Mr. Cyclone. He biggie windbag. He never do anything. He all the time just he talk, he biggie bluff. Uh, oh, I the bluff. Is that so now? Well, try this pot on full size. Ah! Hey, come swiggle me ass for it, Charlie. Get that bowl off in his head, Cyclone. <laughs> Can't see an inch of his face for whoop cream. <laughs> While Gold Pan Jeffers roars with laughter at the hapless Charlie Sam, smothered in whipped cream by Cyclone, the sinister Steve Cody spurs his lathering horse out through the dense pines that fringe the rim of Rattlesnake Canyon. He dismounts, pulls a rifle from the saddle scabbard, then inches his way cautiously to the canyon rim's edge. Far below, he sees Chief Big Horse, his son running deer, and the Indian braves riding slowly into the narrow defile. Then dropping to one knee, the merciless Steve Cody draws a bead on the unsuspecting redskins below. Well, if this ain't gonna be just like shooting fish in a rain barrel. <laughs> How to get running deer in my sights. Like this and pull the trigger. Got him first shot. Now to get out of here. This ain't gonna be no praise for a white man for quite a while. Steady, steady, Consanya. Now get to running and fast. Ha, ha, The remorseless Steve Cody, convinced his cowardly shock will fulfill its vicious promise, spurs his big buckskin into a breakneck gallop and rides for the badlands below. Will the cowardly bullet that hurled running deer from his horse start an Indian massacre on the Lazy Y? Listen! Listen to what Billboard, March 20th Review, says about the Charlie Lung Show. Quote, Here's a kid show which closely approaches a radio version of the standard motion picture cliffhanger. Versatile Charlie Lung handles all the voices and scripting. On show caught, Lung played 11 roles, each clearly established and smoothly voiced. To create strong visual imagery which complements Lung's multi-voicings, the show leans heavily on sound using authentic tom-toms, six-shooters, and pounding horses throughout. It's the kind of stuff children eat up and should glue youngsters to their sets on Saturday mornings. Charlie Lung's new Western series, El Lobo Rides Again, makes an excellent sales vehicle. Cost is exceedingly low. Returns are exceedingly high. And now, back to our story. As Chief Big Horse kneels, horror-stricken beside running deer, he realizes that if his son is to live, he must receive immediate attention. Gently lifting the still form to the shoulders of his massive paint horse, he signals the braves to ride on to the lazy wine. The face of Chief Big Horse is immobile. Only his eyes reveal hate and revenge. Revenge on the people he believes responsible for this cowardly ambush. The Lazy Y Riders. A few minutes later at the ranch house, the Indians' faces livid with anger surround Gold Pan Jeffers as the old rancher examines the fallen brave. Then Jeffers turns and speaks to the chief. Well, he's still living, chief, but mighty bad, mighty bad. Then me take him back to my village. My medicine man make him well. No, no, Sheree. If you move him now, he's going to die for sure. Now, wait a minute. I know something about doctrine, and I've got to prove for that bullet and quick. Uh, Cyclone, go get that there first aid kit of mine and them doctor tools. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to get it. Charlie, give me a of hot water and clean towels. Hold on. I'll go catch him. I'll be back very quickly. Now, Chief Big Horse, how'd this here shooting happen? We ride through pass. White man, ambush my son. Eh? A white man? Me see white man right away on high rim of Mesa. Now you and all white men shall pay. Eh? All white men? Me? By jings, now that don't make no sense, Chief. That ain't good reasoning. You and me has always been good friends. Friends for years. I, Chief Big Horse, take oath many moons ago... If one of my tribe be killed by white man's treachery, Ojiwa tribe shall make war to death. Why, Dad, right to think one of my riders would pull a trick like that? Now you've got to listen here. Say, Lawsy, here it is all the stuff, Mr. Jeffers. 
Huh? Well, this ain't no time for argument, I guess. Set that first aid box alongside the running deer there, Cyclo. Yeah, right, yeah. Now, open her up. Every minute's going to count. Now, Chief, you and your braves are standing there scowling at us. Ain't helping none. So I suggest you beat it for a while. Go on. I go. Make to our shoe. Omane, Skuga. Did you do that? No, we go. But if your white medicine no bring life back to running deer before the sun set right in the sky, then white man's blood and Indian blood shall darken the earth. I have spoken. <laughs> Chief Big Horse and his braves thunder westward toward the Ojiwa village to prepare for sunset massacre of the white men. As the plume of their dust fades in the distance, Gold Pan Jeffers realizes the deadly seriousness of the chief's words. Quickly, a makeshift operating table is prepared. Cyclone, Charlie, and Old Jeffers group around the still form, and the operation begins. Now, Cyclone, put them instruments on that little table there alongside them. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. You think he's going to die, Mr. Jaffa? Huh? Now, he ain't going to die if I can prevent it. Now, now, Cyclone, you start to drip in that ether on the towel on his nose. Yeah. Easy, easy now, just a drop at a time. Now to get that consign bullet out. Steady with ether, then. Charlie, hand me that probe out of the tin now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Here you are, Mr. Jaffa. Well... Here we go, gents. It's his life and ours. Gently, old Gold Pan Jeffers sounds the wound in the young Indian's chest, praying that the answer will be, this young life may continue. Meanwhile, at the Ojiwa village, Chief Big Horse, bound by his oath that should ever one of his tribe be killed by a white man's treachery, he would make war, calls together his tribe. Son of the Ojiwa, I know my son running deer is dying by white man's bullet. Now we'll ride on the war path against treacherous white dog. When the sun turn red... Our tomahawk shall bite with great vengeance. <laughs> Behold, braves of the Ojiwa. Already the sun grows yellow. Now, get away. Sound the war drums, we ride. <laughs> Led by the mighty chief Big Horse, the Indian braves sweep from the Ojiwa village like a tidal wave of copper-colored vengeance, framed in the multicolored dress of their full war regalia. Back at the Lazy Y Ranch, Gold Pan Jeffers has successfully removed the bullet from Running Deer's chest. With anxious hearts, they await his return to consciousness, realizing, should this not take place by sunset... The Ojiwa Indians will surely strike to kill. At this same moment, a mysterious horseman streaks toward the Lazy Y. Mounted on a magnificent black mare, both rider and horse seem as one. The man garbed completely in black. Only the silver encrusted gun swinging at his hips flash in the sinking sun. Underlay! Underlay! Faster, my black beauty! Faster! Faster, Lorena! Faster! Run like the wind! <laughs> It's El Lobo, foe of evil, defender of right. It's El Lobo and the mighty mare, La Reina, fastest horse in all Mexico. Together, once more, they ride on the side of the law. As the first pink glow heralds sunset in the Arizona skies, El Lobo swings in through the rock entrance to the Lazy Y. He pulls the great black mare, Lorena, to a sliding stop before the ranch house. Dismounts and runs quickly to the main doorway. By Jings, you said Lobo. Si, Senor Jeffer. I am welcome at the lazy wine, oh? Well, welcome, you dead burn right here. Come on in, come on in. By Jings, you just come in time, my Lobo. 
I'm in a peck of trouble. Running the ears in there, getting over a gun wound, he was... I know him, amigo. He was ambushed from the rim of the canyon. Jumping G. Hosafet. You know about it? See, si, senor, I see it happen. I'm right along on ridge. Then I see man on canyon get off a big buckskin horse and shoot down into the pass. Shut. Did you recognize Maverick? No, senor. It's too far away. But quickly I ride over to where he was standing with his horse and I find track. <laughs> Very important one. Yeah? Which find out? That the horse he ride had a broken shoe on the left front foot. Ah, uh-huh. A buckskin with a shoe that was broke. Si, senor. And the only man who ride big buckskin around these parts is Steve Cody. Huh? Steve Cody? But how are you going to prove it? By riding to the Silver Dollar Casino and check the left front foot on one buckskin, no? Then, El Lobo, you're going to have to hurry. Why, amigo? Because if running deer ain't back on his feet by sunset, Chief Big Horse has swore to massacre every man on this ranch. The Indian, they are going the war path. You betcha. And if and you can prove it was Cody and not one of my riders that fired that shot, I think we can stop them engines. But you got to do it before sunset. Then, senor, we have not a second to spare. Only my great mayor Lorena could make the run to Lone Pine and back here by sunset. Well, what's your plan, El Lobo? I ride to the Silver Dollar Casino, Steve Cody's hangout, senor, to trap the man I know is guilty of this crime. Until sunset... Adios, amigo. Adios. Andale. Andale. Faster, my black beauty. Faster. Faster, Arena. Faster. Run like the wind. <laughs> Once again, El Lobo rides on the side of the law. The mighty Lorena, her flying hooves burning distance like a meteor of vengeance as she flashes northward in her battle with time. Will El Lobo trap the ruthless Steve Cody before sunset? Will Running Deer recover consciousness before the sun turns to a ball of red? Our next episode, The War Drums of Death. Be sure to listen for the next thrilling episode. El Lobo Rides Again is written and portrayed by one man, Charlie Lung, a man of a hundred voices. Music by Rex Corey. Sound by Bob Conlon, Jack Robinson, and Rob Sutton. Production and direction by Larry Robertson. This is Ralph Langley speaking from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.